you and I were talking about what would be a good topic for us to share with our listeners today. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we keep hearing from clients is that big word, accountability. Yes. How do I hold more people accountable? How do I create a culture of accountability? How can we move the needle on accountability? Um, and so we definitely hear that as a pain point, but no one really sits back and necessarily defines what they're looking for. They don't really define accountability. So my friend, I would love to get your perspective and point of view on that. When you hear accountability, what does that mean to you? Well, it's, it's funny how you started out. I totally agree with you. It's one of those common problems. Every, every leader wags their finger at it and says, we've got an accountability problem. It's, it's just not working. And then when you think about defining it, that's not very difficult. It's honoring your commitments. It's doing what you say you will do. But I think where the problem is, it's the messy middle. We know we have a problem and we can actually define it, you know, give it a definition, but how do we go about doing it? I think that's the issue. I don't know if that's your take, but yeah. I think it's the messy middle that we're just not doing well. So where do you think that starts? Is that a, is that a strategic thing or, or a leadership at the most senior level thing? Is that a tactical thing at the end of meetings? Is the answer yes to all those? Where, where do we start on that? The answer is yes. Okay. And it's funny, if you if you go out and look at some very traditional approaches, you're going to th see things like, you know, it's all about candor and commitment and clarity, uh, or uh, clarity and commitment and, uh, and courage. And we see all these, you know, very catchy ways to address uh, accountability. But I actually think, and this is something that I think the Leadership Foundry does pretty well, and you know, I think this is how we've kind of built our, our reputation and our business, is I think we've got to get more focused on a practical application of a fix like what is what is something that we can put in place with our clients that will help them actually engage in solving this problem and I think that's what we do pretty well you know I say with humility I think we can do that yeah. so I want to mm -hmm. offer you something that you actually pioneered you my friend pioneered oh. so you came up with the trust formula years ago and it's probably mm -hmm. one of the most popular things that we teach at the Leadership Foundry. It's, it's well done, companies use it everywhere, and you get the credit for bringing simplicity and clarity to the idea of trust. So I'm gonna take a stab at this, and I've come up with a practical accountability formula. Oh, okay, I love this. So, I think people will be chomping at the bit for this. So bear with me. All right, let's let, go. Let's go on a journey. I'm going to give you a high level, and okay. then I'd like to dive in, and then I want, to, I want to get your take on this. Beautiful. So when I think about the practical accountability formula, at a high level, it's clarity plus effective business meetings multiplied by the degree of your personal ownership, and that's what equals practical accountability. So clarity plus effective business meetings times your degree of personal ownership. So let's unpack that just a little bit. Yeah, please. So clarity is something that we always talk to our leaders and our teams about. We've got to practice clarity. You've got to be better at communicating the why, the who, the what, the when. We have to define role clarity. We have to have to have to have good communication clarity. So as a leader or an aspiring leader, even if you're just leading a team as a team lead, whatever your role is, if you're the one that's driving the engine, if you're running things, you've got to practice clarity. So let's say that you're trying to solve a problem. You've got problems and you want better accountability on the other end. So as a leader, communicating with clarity what you want, when you want it, what the problem is, all of that. It's gotta be, it's gotta be, you've gotta be really buttoned up about that. But then you think about, well, what are the what are the vehicles that we can use? What are the different channels? Well, you and I talk a lot about dysfunctional business meetings. So part two of my formula is the clarity married to an effective business meeting. Well, what makes an effective business meeting? It's clearly an agenda. Uh, we have very specific topics to talk about. We assign um, tasks to get things done. We give ownership of those tasks to specific people, and we have clear deadlines to get those things done. And then we have a scribe taking notes to get those notes, capturing what we spoke about, out to everyone within a reasonable time frame, typically 24 hours. Yeah, beautiful. So clarity plus an effective business meeting, but then the multiplier is the degree of personal ownership. 
that you bring to the table, you being anyone on the team. So some people have a really high degree of personal ownership. You know, back in the old days when I was a senior executive with Waffle House, you know, we had this mantra, if you touch it, you own it. And that's how you acted. If I was involved 1%, I acted like I owned 100%. That's how I was trained. Some people aren't as comfortable with that. Some people don't like accountability. They don't like ownership. They want to, they don't want to be in charge of things. But if you get the clarity right and you do it in the right vehicle, I would argue it's the meetings, then the, the, the leader can coach the team on increasing their level of ownership, pointing out why it's powerful, pointing out why it's meaningful, why you should do it. But I think if you get those three pieces right, that's going to elevate the degree of practical accountability in your team and your business.